our May meeting. So uh, thank you for attending. <coughs> I have a few opening remarks. Won't be long. Um, we have several items that are uh, public hearing uh, items on the agenda. And if you wish to make comments at that time, uh, we have comment slips at the front with our, <coughs> our, our staff lady right here. Um, <clears throat> for future purposes, it is important that you fill out a slip and drop it in the box when you come forward to speak. And uh, as you come forward to use the microphone, please state your full name, your mailing address, and uh, your zip code. Uh, we'll call each case on the agenda in order. Hear first from the applicant, then those speaking in favor. Ten minutes uh, are allotted for the principal spokesperson. Three minutes for each additional speaker. We'll then hear from those wishing to speak against an application. And the same rules apply. If there is a principal spokesperson uh, in opposition, that person gets 10 minutes, everyone else three minutes behind them. And uh, uh, the staff is uh, quick on the trigger to let me know when that time period expires. So please don't let me get in trouble with staff. Um, <clears throat> And after that process uh, for and against, one representative of the application can speak in rebuttal if desired. Uh, after hearing comments on each case, the board will then immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving on to the next case on the agenda. Please note when the board is deliberating, uh, uh, the public is not allowed to comment. Uh, any members of the public may request a copy of the board's decisions on a particular case in writing by contacting our office, 673-6480, after 1 p.m. tomorrow, or by accessing our website, which is shreveportcaddompc.com. For consent agenda items, uh, of which I believe we have none today, and other agenda items that do not require a public hearing. Public comments can be made upon request by filling out a comment slip. If comments are requested for a specific <coughs> agenda item, uh, the chairman, that would be me, will offer an opportunity for those comments before the commission takes action on that agenda item. All of the MPC's zoning recommendations are submit, submitted to the city council for final action. Please note that it is your responsibility to contact the appropriate governing body about their procedures as related to the matter you're concerned with. In other words, if the matter goes from here to the city council, it's up to them and their procedures apply. Um, as a courtesy, please turn off your cell phones. And I believe, uh, um, uh, we're ready to proceed. We value your testimony and appreciate you complying with these guidelines. So the next item, oh, I'm sorry. The next item is our prayer and our Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'd like to join us, please stand. Uh, Ms. Jackson will lead us in a prayer and Mr. Andrews will lead us in a pledge. <coughs> Father God, we come to you with bow down heads and humble hearts. Father, our healer, our protector. Again and again, we come to you thanking you, thanking you for everything that you have done and all those things that you are about to do in our lives, dear Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone that is here today. Bless those that are on their way and those that had the desire to be here but couldn't be here for some shape, form, or fashion. Lord, touch our bodies. Have this meeting to be what you would have it to be in your name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining me in the prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have several uh, items to go through before we get to the public hearings. Um, I don't have any particular opening remarks, but I might say a few things at the end. Uh, we do have minutes uh, of the April 12th meeting that uh, have been submitted 
to the members of the commission. Do I hear a motion approve. for second. approval? That would be a motion by Mr. Andrews and a second by Mr. I'm sorry, Ms. Jackson to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? Okay, please vote your machines. Very good, thank you. The next item is the first public hearing. It's case number 22-236-C. It is a zoning request uh, submitted by Mr. Leonel Padron. The location is Merrick Street on the north side of Merrick, approximately 130 feet west of Roosevelt Avenue. The existing zoning is R15. Uh, the request is to go from R15 to C2. Uh, Mr. Padron intends to build offices on this property. Uh, we were advised at our uh, work session at 1.30 that Mr. Padron has requested uh, this matter be deferred. Isn't that correct, Mr. Clark? Yes, sir. We have, we have a letter from Mr. Padron requesting that he <coughs> defer this uh, application to the June hearing. Very He's good. out of town and could not be here today, but okay. he wanted to share some information that he had in reference to this case. Do we have any comment cards submitted for this case? Do we have any members, no. any members of the audience who wish to speak to this matter who might have attended without knowing Mr. Padron wanted to defer? <laughs> Stoner Hill. When is the June meeting? Uh, uh, June 7th. June meeting is the 7th? June 7th, yes. June the 7th. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am, in the pink. Did you wish to speak? Yes, sir. Um, Can you come up, please? We need to hear, uh, and please pull the microphone down so we can hear you. And yes, we need your name you. and address, please. All right. Uh, thank you to the board members. My name is Carolyn Brown. My address is 328 East Merrick <coughs> Street, 71104. Now this is my parents' home and it's directly across from where Mr. Patron is petitioning to the rezoning. I don't know about you, but when I think about a resident, I think about a front and a backyard. I think about, you know, my children or grandchildren in this case going outside with a business on the corner that doesn't seem like a, a residential environment when he purchased the property I'm sure he knew that it was a resident area and we have a ton of vacancies up and down Uri that he can use for office space so I'm here today representing my parents um, Joe and Jesse Lewis, and that we don't want a business on the corner of the street, or opposite from us, you know? That's their lifelong home there. Ms. Brown, did you receive a notice from the city about this case? We did. And we were you received several. Were you invited to a neighborhood participation meeting? Yes. Did you I just recently moved back with Okay, did, well, did you have a chance to attend that meeting? I went to one at the uh, neighborhood center on Viking Drive. That was the first one I was able to attend. I think it was in March and Mr. Tr Patron was there. And I let him know then that, you know, we don't really want that in our neighborhood. We okay. want improvement, but we don't want businesses at the corner. I mean, I don't think either one of y'all would want a business at the corner of your street that you reside on. And that's all I'm saying. My parents are all elders, and they really can't speak for themselves, so that's why I'm here today representing. But yes, I did go to that meeting. Yes, ma'am. I made a point to be here today. Well, we appreciate that too, Ms. Brown. Um, any board members have a, a question for Ms. Brown? This matter is being deferred at the request of the developer and uh, we believe it will be taken up again in June. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I believe that concludes item number six. 
So we'll move on to number three. I'm sorry. Anybody else in the room wishing to speak on Mr. Padron's uh, project? Okay. I don't see any hands going up. Thank you. Uh, item number seven. You didn't take a vote. Oh, I'm sir. sorry. We would like, uh, we need a motion to defer Close this to matter. Defer. Second. Ms. McCullough uh, moves to defer. Second. And Mr. Moss seconds that. Any further uh, questions or comments? Okay, uh, a vote yes is a vote to defer till next month. And thank you, Mr. Andrews. Okay, number seven, uh, uh, case number 23-46-C, temporary use permit. Uh, submitted by applicant Greenhead Gun Club, uh, which is also the property owner. The location is 4004 Hillary Huckabee uh, Avenue on the north side of Hillary Huckabee, approximately 1,900 feet west of Interstate 220. The existing zoning is RA. The request is a temporary use permit and site plan approval to conduct rock crushing on the property. Uh, the um, applicant uh, previously received approval to do this work at this location and this is a renewal of that permit uh, is the gentleman in the uh, in the room today yes sir would you like to step up good afternoon my name is John James I live at 2270 North Cross Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107. Uh, I am the owner of the property. Uh, I did come before the board last year, work with Mr. Clark and Ms. Correa back then to uh, get this permit done. And it was, uh, as we all know, it's a process. So I was very proud, very happy to, to get the board's approval last year. But at that time, as we went into the summer for rock crushing, for concrete crushing, did not realize how hard the pandemic had hit the people in the in the industry of getting I had the gentleman that owned the, the crushing the, um, um, equipment and he was here at the meeting with us and everything was set on go until it came time to do the work and he didn't have the men to do the to do the work that needed to be done during the summertime so since that time as we started to recover at the in november december we did get to get them out there we did start doing it but unfortunately the weather did not cooperate the weather in concrete crushing if you don't if it's not dry and hot the dirt is not dirt it's mud and whenever you're trying to crush the rock and mud is on the concrete it doesn't work it clogs the machines up and so the guys were like well, we can't we can't do this and so they had to pull off the job so that left me into watching the permit run out. And so I'd contacted Mr. Clark about trying to get an extension and we don't do extensions, we had to do a renewal. But uh, uh, Ms. Trent has been very helpful in uh, setting me up and going through the process. I did receive, I have received a couple questions from Ms. Trent on, uh, on the condition of we get a new DEQ EPA on my emissions to make sure my emissions were, have not changed or would still be underneath that level. I immediately called the the EPA, the guy who helped me with the last time, he called Mr. Weish, and uh, Mr. Weish was supposed to email Ms. Trent his approval, and so I've already got that taken care of. We are still under that same, going to be way underneath that threshold, and Mr. West Weish doesn't have a problem with that. She, she uh, called me today and said there were some concerns with the neighborhood on, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's horrific to have a facility in that area and go through the flooding that we went through seven eight years ago we had four hundred year floods in less than 14 months uh, so i'm very much aware of the flooding issues in that area in the mlk area and and so i am very attentive to making sure that i don't do anything that would be cause any harm in any way in any shape to my to that neighborhood that i own property in so what I did was I went through how this process, um, how this process started was back in 2016. I approached this this Mr. David Williamson. I brought him with me today for to answer any questions that y'all may have that is above my pay grade. Um, he is uh, he handled I I applied. I got Mr. Williamson to apply 
to the Corps of Engineers and the Corps of Engineers have been out on that property because it's a lot of wetlands are in that area. And so you have to, when it comes to wetlands with the Corps of Engineers, you don't ask forgiveness, you get permission before you do anything. And so I hired Mr. Williamson. He did a, a super job at putting a wetland delineation together. Then what that does, it defines the wetlands from the uplands. So the uplands, I can do, I can build on that and do that. That's above the flood zone. That's, that's not in the wetland area. The wetland area, you cannot build on without mitigating and all the things that it comes to, as I'm sure y'all are very well aware of people building in wetland areas or the mitigation that goes forward there. So what we did was we delineated that line. And, uh, and so we, as soon as we got the, the core looked at all that, they evaluated all that with Mr. Williams's work, they gave, sent that back and they approved everything and they delineated the line. Well, I immediately went through and, and we marked that line because in the summertime, you know, it's all good and dry. The wetland dries up. It's not as wet. So we delineated that line and we, we fenced that area so that we would never get into that wetland area. And so when I built up that area, I built up that upland area as I'm raising that up to create a business opportunity for my children. They, um, you know, it looks like I'm pushing stuff into the wetland. The, so when you drive by, you think, Oh my gosh, he's filling in wetland area, but I'm actually not. And uh, I've had a couple of complaints where people call the Corps of Engineers, say this guy's filling in wetland area, and I, I, they called me and they checked me. They've been out on site. I have my my wetland delineation plan. I have since then a couple of years ago, I applied for a pond permit. I want to build a pond to fish in, you know, with my grandkids. And so I hired Mr. Williamson again to come in and do another permit through the Corps on building a pond. To bring it, bring the dirt out and create a fishing pond so we could fish with the grandkids. And I haven't built that pond yet, but I'm permitted. I got a permit to build it. And in that process, it is uh, uh, I'm actually taking, I'm making more volume for water than I am filling in area. So I'm not filling in any wetland area. I'm only filling in up there in my upland area. I haven't gone any made any differences in that in the last since 2016, whenever I started that work. I have some aerial maps that I printed off if any, if, if any of y'all would like to see that as far as the uh, mapping system. But um, I just, you know, I mean, I'm in favor of, I want to get this thing done and I want to get out of the concrete business. I want to get out of the land business and we want to change that with the, with the MPC to a, uh, a suitable uh, zoning for that the MPC would be agreeable to, for my kids to put a business there. But uh, I'm not to that point yet. I need, I got to get the concrete crushed first and get that done. Okay, Mr. James, thank you for that. Um, before you step down, I want to uh, ask the board if anybody has any questions. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Mr. Andrews. I don't have a question, sir. Good to see you again. Would you share with the board the history of purchasing that property and how many acres you actually own? Own 300 acres. I bought it in 1999 as a young fireman on the fire department, on Shreveport Fire Department. And uh, Mr. Andrews is familiar because uh, with that area, he passes by there a lot. And he's he's checked up on me a little bit here and there. As I uh, and as I retired from the fire department, I, I ended up I, I knew there was value in that property. And uh, and while people laughed at me on the fire department and counseled me and telling me that I was making a big mistake for a young fireman with three small kids. Now that property is worth a lot of money, and uh, it's been a it's a it's a good story of a you know uh, uh, good you know I ain't gonna say good because I'm not a good good person, but I try to be as a as a good Christian guy. But uh, um, but my blessings are from my mom. You know, my mom's the one that uh, I get blessings because of the way my mom raised me. So it's it's Thank her you. credit, not me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other board members? Okay. Um, we understand uh, from staff that they're uh, offering a three-year um, permit here, Mr. James. Is that correct? That is correct, and I'm in favor of that because after going through what I went through this last year, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I want to be done as quick as I can be done because I want to apply for a zoning change for that area. So I'm not looking – I'm not trying to make a – concrete crushing facility out of that. I want to get my concrete crushed, get my, we're going to use it on site. Uh, what I told Ms. Shrimp is the, the gentleman that's going to be crushing my concrete will remove his concrete to sell and I will be keeping my concrete. I've got a lot of crushed concrete I need to build up to build the base there 
and and that's what I'm doing with mine. How much of your property is paved? Paved is in uh, hard surface. Uh, up up there in the front is uh, six seven acres. Six seven acres up there in the front. Okay, very good. Uh, any other questions for from board members? Uh, what was his name, Mister? Mr. James. Mr. James. So you initially started out with the um, crawfish. There, we're still selling crawfish there, but the crawfish became public whenever we permitted on a, on a temporary basis to do a cooking station out front. But we, we were doing the cooking station to help me move crawfish during the crawfish season, but it just, with that parking area, people coming in and out of there, it just, we're trying to get, to, uh, my priority is concrete. I want to get that concrete pile out of there. And so that's, that's what, so I have not, we did not renew our permit for cooking crawfish this year. Uh, they're still catching crawfish in there. We're still selling crawfish out of there, but it's a wholesale crawfish that, that, that we catch on the site and get rid of. No cooking, no trailers, no took. I had a little concrete parking lot out there and stuff, but that's all on the front seven, eight acres up front, six, seven, eight acres. And uh, that's where we're working off of. I'm smoothing all that out, just cleaning it all up, getting ready to put concrete in, the crushed concrete in. Well, in looking at the rock crushing, the way you got it set up, it's, it's, it's out front. I mean, you said it, it, it's not on the seven or eight acres? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's six acres up front. When you drive in, I mean, I've got a, I've, I poured a concrete, a thick concrete driveway because that was to get a special permit. Even when I was doing crawfish, we had to get a, had to be concrete or asphalt to meet the zoning needs. So I did a full big concrete because asphalt would have never held up and I wasn't wasting money. So we did a big concrete driveway right there to meet the needs of zoning and the, um, and the, 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 con the, the crawfish was sold right up there on the front, but that's no longer, that's where we had cooked the crawfish and had crawfish. But if I put out a big crawfish sign, I get a cease and desist order from Mr. Clark's office really quick. Mr. James, are you in good stead with your neighbors out there? I, I don't have any problem. Miss Rogers came to, I had the first neighborhood participation meeting a little over a year ago. And uh, Miss Rogers came from the neighborhood. I explained she, her concerns in were on flooding. Uh, I discussed that with Miss Rogers and there was a couple other, I'd have to go back and look at my notes for the names, but Miss Rogers is the, 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 the uh, participant that I remember and I uh, got to talk to the most because she was representing the neighborhood. And so I talked to her about the flooding. I talked to her about my history with the flooding. I talked to her about the things that I want to make sure doesn't happen and uh, that I'm not filling in wetland areas that would cause more flooding in the MLK area. Very Question. good. Any, uh, yes, Mr. Moss. I know we, we, we're about to vote on a three-year um, deal here. How long do you think it's going to take for you to, to remove that concrete and everything? You think it's going to take the full it's, three years? It's, it's going to take, Give or take a weather. three to four months of crushing is my, my guesstimation. I'm not a concrete crusher now, uh -huh. but I'm going off what people have told me, and they're the experts. And, you know, I had guys say they could get it done in two and a half months. I've said guys that are, I've got guys say, man, it's going to take you four months to get that stuff done. Okay. So that, that's, that's where I'm at on the concrete crushing. I just, the three-year thing, I was like, you know, that's a, just a, a stress reliever on me because yeah. this, it's a $1,400 payment for me to apply for this. And I did that last year. And I'm doing it again this year, so I don't want to pay another $1,400. That's a lot of money for me. And so, you know, that's a, uh, I'm a fireman, retired fireman. I'm not a big businessman. Okay. So, um, so that is that is where the three year come out. I mean, I did not request that. If that's what you mean, that came no, from Miss no. Trent in the office of the MPC to keep okay. from me being seeing y'all again. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. Anyone Thank else you. would like to speak in favor of this application? <laughs> Yes, sir, please come forward. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Matthew James, son of uh, John James. I live at 8299 Blanchard Fair Road, 71107. Uh, I just wanted to speak in favor. Uh, John James is my dad, so all of the work that he does uh, you know, he has spent his life working on that piece of property, making it into something that he could pass along to his kids, AKA me. So uh, I am in favor of the, uh, the, the permit. So any renewal uh, that helps him would help me. So I would 
like to speak in favor of that. And all the things that you know, he said I could speak for, most of the time I was out there working on the farm with them. <laughs> Mighty fine. Any questions for Mr. James Jr.? I know you're not a junior. Right. But <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you all. Anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Good afternoon, Chairman Robertson, other members of the MPC, Mr. Clark and staff. My name is Irma Rogers, 1920 Michoud Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107, for the record. I'm president of Martin Luther King Community Development Corporation. I had some calls, and one of the, our members who is here, who will speak today, was concerned <clears throat> about there not being crawfish signs or crawfish sales there any longer. The concerns are the rock crushing had overtaken what they thought was going to be crawfish sales and the crawfish buggy. And, and, and now let me just give you a little reference. I know I don't have a lot of time, but a reference to this is we had to fight for years to get rid of Harrison Materials Management, which was on Russell Road, which became elevated so high that it was taller than 220. If you pass by 220 across Russell Road, going towards uh, Hillary Huckabee, so the neighbors get kind of nervous. We already have problems with uh, sewage and drainage in University Park, particularly down at the end of Kemp Lane and Circle Drive and Audrey Lane because there's really no drainage system that was built when this was built. And I was at city council meeting two weeks ago talking about the streets and drainage issues that we have. So. Understandably, the residents have concerns when they see large piles that go straight up. So I think that's, I did speak to Mr. Um, James, and I was there when they offered for the public community to come out, and he told me they were going to be crawfish. The second, the other permit was for rock crushing, which was only going to last for so many months. So the question here in the opposition that I'm getting from residents and members of our organization is that will it take you three years? Can we not get this process over within one year, perhaps 18 months? It is backed up to the back portion of University Park and some parts off of Russell Road, McMarshall Street, and Denise Circle, to be in particular. There's another street that's on the old maps Ms. Harris, one of our members, Mayor Harris, she told me that you will find it on the old maps, but you can't find the street because it's been eaten up by some of the wetlands and the forestry there. So they have concerns about it because of their property, and these are homeowners. So if, and, I, and some of the residents complained, you had no trespassing signs put up and that kind of thing. Well, that made the residents very anxious because who's going to see they don't get the reports if EPA went out and etc those reports we don't have or the citizens don't have so the concern is will it take three years to do this can this be done in a more expedient manner I understand that we did speak about the weather and everything and I understand exactly what he's saying about that However, will it take three years? The question is, how long would it take to get the rock crushing done, dissipate it, and level the area? Before you step down, Ms. Rogers, uh, any questions for uh, Ms. Irma Rogers? I want to ask a question. Ms. Uh, McCullough? Uh, you mentioned something, Ms. Rogers, about a map. I just know I'm recalling the 1998 map that showed from Russell Road down to Round Road was, was wetlands. But I'm hearing Mr. James say some lines were, jumped, were drawn to separate or um, 
keep this out of the wetlands? And I was just wondering, how could that be done? You mentioned a map. Uh, what map <gasps> are you speaking of? Ms. About? Harris, uh, who's lived there for more than 35 or 40 years, is Mary Harris. She's one of our members. She's the one told me that there is another street back behind McMarshall, which McMarshall is the last street if you're heading um, west, more or less southwest, if you're heading west, it's the last street off Russell Road. But she said there was another street there on some of the older maps. I don't have those copies. I'd have to look it up and pull it and see where she got her sources, which I'm sure they have it in archives with the city or tax assessor's office. Probably have to pull it from there. But she's the one who told me it's supposed to be another street back here, but it's been covered up. I said, okay. But she's lived there um, for quite some time. Well, Ms. Rogers, as far as you know, and I know you've been an activist for some time, even before Rosenwald subdivision came through, as far as you know, I'm asking you, wasn't that area that the rock crushing is in considered wetlands at some point? Yes, as far as I know it was, because if you, if you just view from the aerial view or off 220, you will see the water sits. The water has sat and drained for several years, not only on that side, now it sits on the other side of uh, Hillary Huckabee. If there is some flooding or if they open the floodgates at Cross Lake, you're gonna push that water all the way back up into MLK. There have been times that Russell Road has been closed because it's covered over. It's covered over. And I mean, this is not just necessarily the flooding we had, I think it was 2015, 2016, during those years. This is outside of that. This is if it's heavy rains and they open those floodgates, which backs up, it goes underneath Hillary Huckabee and comes right back off across Lake into our community. You can't drive down Russell Road. It's been closed before. Now, I know that since I've been there, and I've been up here about 50 years. So you're requesting that he get the rock crushing done in less than three years since he's there? That's the request that's coming from uh, members who came of to our meeting. association? Yes, and one of the members will speak. She lives directly in community in University Park. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions for Ms. Rogers? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Any other uh, parties wishing to speak on this matter in opposition? Hi, my name is Carol Smith. I stay at 2630 Kemp Lane, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107. I am definitely opposed to what's going on behind my house because when I went to the meeting, it was all about crawfish, not about all this extra stuff. And as I drove down the highway, I see all these trucks coming in, coming in, and the land is getting higher and higher and higher. And he said he fenced off the wetlands, but water was at my back fence when the flood came. Where's all this water gonna go? With you building and putting all this stuff behind my house, I had to deal with other stuff that was going on back there. I used to call the cops all the time, but nothing ever happened with it. So I don't know what the, he's saying, he's building something for his family, but what, what am I getting? What am I getting behind my house? I want to know. I thought it was crawfish, I was for it. But he said he want to build a building for his family. Well, I had to deal with all that shooting behind my house all time of the night, all time in the morning. So I want to know what is going to be going on. If he want to get through it in one year, I take that and put his crawfish, but I don't know what's coming behind my house. And I do want to, I do want to say I have lived in my house for 51 years, come June will be 52 years, and I don't want to be ended up having to move because of what's coming behind my house. I am opposed to what's going on. My name is Carol Smith. Any questions for Ms. Smith? I know you. 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? My name is Joyce Smith, and I live at 27, 27, 20, 37 Jones Maple Road. I moved to the Martin Luther King when I was seven years old. Then I left, and I'm back. And that is a big eyesore. Like they say, it's getting higher and higher, and it's been going on for years. How long does it take to crush concrete? I don't know. But there has to be a timeline on everything. And enough, I have never seen a crawfish sold there. I, they say they were selling them. I've never bought one from that place because I love my crawfish. But I saw the signs, but I never saw anything being done considering crawfish. Now, if he wants to crush the, uh, like you say, the country, like you say, a year is, I think, is a good, enough time. You've been up there, what, four or five years crushing it down. How long do the resident in that area have to put up with it? There's a, it just should be an end to it every day. So that is my opinion. Any questions for Ms. Smith? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Anyone else in opposition? Mr. James, you get a chance for a rebut. Ms. Rogers discussed that map. I think I have that map if you'd like to see it, Ms. McCullough. It's that, that I can show it to you or Ms. Rogers. It's a wetland wetland map of that area. That is, uh, but the area they're discussing is on the uh, Russell Road, the backside on Kemp. I mean, I'm very familiar with those. I spent 20 years in the fire department in that neighborhood at that fire station number six on David Rain. So I have been in more houses in that neighborhood than most people. And so I'm very familiar with uh, all around Road, Kemp, Aldry. So. Now when was this map done? So I'm gonna show you what Miss Rogers is referring to. Where that pencil is, that's Russell Road. It runs underneath I-220. And whenever we got those floods, it covers Russell Road where you cannot, we couldn't drive down Russell Road. Everybody understands it floods. And so where the concrete crushing batch plant is, is right there where the point of that pencil is. And this, and the maps I have are, if you look on there, the, the striped lines are the wetlands. The dark green area is the upland, and the swamp back in there, the, the water, is the wet, is uh, uh, waterways. It's national waterways. That's how the Corps of Engineers defines it. So I am very familiar, like Miss, Miss Rogers said, on the wetland. The, the, the reason you don't see the stripes going up beside the interstate is I don't own that property. That's, that's somebody else's property, and I didn't do a wetland determination on their property. That's from the Corps of Engineers. That's not my map. I did not do that. I think Mr. Williamson would, would tell you that. That's, that's from him and the Corps of Engineers. They, they, gave, they put that map together, not me. And, and so the, what I'm doing at the, where the, pen, the lead of the pencil is, is, is where... I mean, during the floods, the water went from that waterways through the wetland and up to the back of Kemp and Round Grove. And in my, in my working area, I mean, I had four foot of water. I mean, in fact, my son that y'all met that was on the front page of the Shreveport Times uh, in water this deep pushing stuff away because of the poor predictions that we had when the, the city or the... Uh, Actually, I was on the fire department then. I was down in the planning centers because it went from 34-foot flood stage to, oh, my goodness, it's going to be 36-foot. And that's when they, they realized they, they haven't 
it's a river problem, a Red River problem of silting in. And so the Red River used to be like this right here. Now it's like this right here. And when you take the same amount of water in this much area, you have the backflow in the 12 mile bio. And that's what me and Miss Rogers talked about at the neighborhood participation meeting. Um, what Miss Smith was referring to, or some of the ladies were talking about with crawfish, was yes, I, I mean, I mean the crawfish was a good uh, part-time business for me as a retired fireman. I was catching crawfish in that wetland area, and we were selling it out of, out of there as catching crawfish in Louisiana as an agricultural crop. So you, it's like growing tomatoes in your backyard, in your garden. You can put a bushel out in front and say, I'm selling you a bushel of tomatoes for 20 bucks. Crawfish are the exact same way. So we did sell crawfish out of there, and as, as everybody, that's not really contestable. I'm not being untruthful about that. But I'm trying to move away from the crawfish and get the crawfish, get the concrete out of our way and get it done. Nobody wants it. I can assure you these ladies don't want that concrete gone more than I do. But I got to crush it to get it out of there. And uh, the extended amount is a, uh, just because I've got, a, got an extended amount doesn't mean I'm going to use it. I don't want to use it. My son is ready for, to, to own that property. I'm ready to give it to him. But uh, uh, I got to get that concrete done. But I just don't want to have to come back and, and see y'all again. I want to get it done. I appreciate it a little bit longer time, but I'm going to do everything in my power not to be there longer. I want to get it all done this summer. I mean, if we, but if we have a wet summer and we have wetness and stuff like that and my guys can't do it, I, you know, it's a cushion for me, you know, so I don't have to come back to you. So, Any questions for Mr. James? So, I'm, I'm very familiar with that area because my, I grew up in that area, and my, my mom, um, who has terminal cancer, still lives in that area. And so, I, I, I'm, I guess my question to you is, do you understand what the members of the neighborhood are saying about their environmental concerns? That's, that's, their, that's their homes. And I almost feel like it's an oxymoron. I, I grew up in that neighborhood, and I now live on Cross Lake. And so when it begins to rain to protect our property, the water goes to the neighborhood that I grew up in. It is an excessive amount of flooding. I've watched my parents live in that home with the dumpsters, with all the trash. You know, that's, that's, that's not a good feeling to drive down or not have access to my mom when things like this happen. So I know what you're trying to do, but I think that community is proposing a great question, is that they don't want it to take three years. And you can't assure them that it's not going to take the three years. And in the meantime, if it takes three years, she still got water in, the, in, her, in her, back, her back lawn. So how do you address those genuine concerns from those neighbors in that area, and 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 how can you how can you help them? I hear you saying how you can help yourself, but how can you help the members in that community? That's a great question. And uh, uh, I, I, first, let me say I not only sympathize with the ladies, I empathize with them because I've spent so much time in there. I, I mean, a large part of my 33 years on the Shreveport Fire Department, over 20 of them were in number six. So I have lived in down in there in that neighborhood. I've been on those roads. I know exactly what you're talking about. But instead of hearing it from me, let me introduce you to the engineer, Mr. David Williamson. He is the water expert and he, let, he, let you hear it from an expert. That's why he's here today in case for that very exact question. So they're not hearing it from me. They're hearing it from an expert who who's an engineer in the wetlands and water. And uh, let me let you talk, is, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, if you're so inclined to do that, I asked them to have the engineer to speak at the proper time for the engineer to speak, but that didn't happen. So you will have to go out of order to allow him to come in at this point. Any objection from the members of the board? You can do it by acclamation to go out of order. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, I don't hear any objection about hearing from the engineer. So, Mr. Williamson, if you could take the mic. Um, I think if you could do this in three minutes, I think uh, these folks would be happy. I'll do my best. Yes. May we, may we put this up again, please? Thank you. 
Mr. Clark, Commissioners, my name is David Williamson, 10,003 Stonehaven Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71118. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you and answer any questions that you may have. Um, I'm a licensed professional geologist in the state of Louisiana. I do wetland delineations and permitting with the Corps of Engineers. I've been pleased to work with Mr. James on his property since about 2015. One of the things I admire him is his sincere desire to do things the right way. He contacted me because he wanted to make sure he went through the right process, got the permits that were required by federal and state government, and that's what I've assisted him with since 2015. The map that we were looking at previously that's up on your screen, um, the, the area right in here, this dark green area, that is the crushing area, correct, Mr. James? Yes. It is an upland area as defined by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Their representatives have been on that property. I've walked all over the property. I've seen it flood. I've seen it dry. I understand the concerns about flooding. However, those concerns about flooding are not caused by the operations on this upland area. It, it has always been an upland area. If you go back and look at U.S. Geological Survey topographic maps, they show it as an upland area, not in a wetland area. Um, Mr. James did get a permit from the Corps for some dredging in this pond. He was trying to put a channel, a boat channel in there to facilitate fishes, fishing. We got a nationwide permit from the Corps of Engineers. He actually excavated material out of the wetland and put it in an upland area. That increases the flood storage area in those wetland areas. That means when water comes in, it's got a bigger bathtub to be in. He, he didn't remove a lot of fill material in there, but he removed some. And anything that you take out of a wetland area like that increases the flood storage capacity, which in effect has the ability to lessen floods that may occur in the future. But uh, I can assure you that based on my examination of the property, the place where he is storing concrete and crushing it to recycle that material is definitely an upland area. Um, to emphasize what he told you earlier about fencing it, fencing is maybe a, a, a light term. <laughs> he used big concrete barriers. It's not like a, a wire fence that something's going to flow through dirt or something. He's got big concrete barriers out there to make sure he does not go into the wetland area. And the Corps of Engineers has examined that property since it was permitted. Uh, they've been by there, looked at it, and they're, they're, un, they're comfortable with the fact he is not putting any fill material in a wetland area, which would increase the uh, possibility of flooding possibly, but he's not, not doing that. And I know he's working extremely hard to get that pile of rock that may be offensive to someone as they drive by out of there as fast as he can. It's in his best interest to do exactly what the, uh, the ladies have talked about, about their desire to get it out as fast as they can. Um, it, it's, a, it's a swampy area. There's a, water, a lot of water that comes into there. But I can assure you, based on my examination of the property, those conditions are not caused or aggravated by the present rock crushing that's going on. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Mr. Williamson? I, Ms. I McCullough? Asked, I asked a question, Mr. Williams, and from, I think, Ms. Trent. Uh, the neighborhood, the community across from uh, the rock crushing, Lakeview, you all haven't heard from any of those citizens? If you're the rock crushing is here, if you look on the slide, and Lake View is on the opposite side, uh, over to by the, KCS Railroad, up in this area, no, down below, right there, yes, yeah, yeah. no, we haven't. Uh, there's there's some industrial complexes along the south side of the road in in this area. Um, I've done some work on this property in here for wetlands that somebody was looking at putting in a service station. They never did that. But as far as I know, and Mr. James can can uh, say, but I've, we've not heard any complaints from those residents. 
There's a large, uh, you know, KCS has a large rail yard up here with a lot of activities going on, but not that I'm aware. <laughs> yes, ma'am. May I share this with you before you go? Um, I represented the area on the commission as well as the city council. And so in that area, according to the 1998 master plan map, I mean, it was shown as wetlands to become the Paul Lynch Park, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and in serving on the commission as well as the city council, we've had to oppose, uh, what are those? Those are burrowed, burrowed uh, what are they called, pits? Borrowed pits. Borrowed pits. Borrowed pits. We've had to oppose borrowed pits coming in. Um, We've also had to oppose other rock crushings. I don't know if you were with Blunt, but I think we had to oppose no. a Blunt rock crushing, and I was wondering if you all were with them. Um, I know we also had to oppose right at Russell Road, um, prior to getting to your rock crushing spot, people even wanted to bring in developments, tax credits there in the wetlands. So. Um, I, I, I participated as a politician, and I know how the politics go. It's, it's about who you know, even with working with Harrelson's landfill. It was all political. And I personally feel that this too is political, especially coming up to our most recent mayor's race. But I just watched it and I didn't say anything. But um, I watched it from the time it became a crawfish business and when I looked up and I saw the the uh, rock question I'm like wow okay well you know politics have allowed this to come in on us when I say us because within my district it's 79 percent minority 80 percent minority so at the point I'm trying to make I didn't get tired I mean I fought when I knew I was gonna lose but something has to happen to stop this type of activity from coming into a minority neighborhood. Um, down the street you have a sewage or so, a raw sewage that drains. So you got your raw sewage, they are clearing the woods right there for something else that we don't know what's going on. You got your rock crushing plant that was once a crawfish, whatever. I never saw anybody buy, craw, buy crawfish. I thought it was just staged, because I never saw anybody coming in buying crawfish. I never saw any steam coming from crawfish even being cooked. But you know, being in politics 16 years, and you get so tired of the old politics, and when you see it constantly happen, you know, it just takes your breath away. Um, what I would like to see, and I don't know if that's the time, and I've talked with a couple of my colleagues, I don't know if you have to get a three-year permit, but since you're there, and based on what's been going on within the last, let's say 20 years in that minority neighborhood, could you possibly consider um, taking a year's time to clear it out that, 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 um, that rock crushing site we even fought one down off of Hearn Avenue across from Green, Ac Green Acres Baptist Church. All of that brings about, uh, it affects our air quality. I've met with DEQ, Chuck Brown, all those people, I know all of them. I've seen the politics from the landfill on. And so if you don't have, and again, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And if the deck is stacked such that you can get your rock crushing through, you're gonna get it through. But I'm gonna plead with you, enough is enough. You know, we have been over with low income housing. I mean, it's just, we're always being, and I was hoping that I wouldn't have to get here again because I've been there. Enough is just enough. We have just been overcrowded with tax credits, uh, which, by the time it got to Washington, D.C., it was illegal, but it was done. And it's done through our municipalities here in the city of Shreveport, Cattle Parish, meaning that the deck is always stacked against us. 
So we can come down here and we can say what we don't want and you can say what adjustments you've made. At the end of the day, it's all political. You got your soldiers where they needed to be in order to get this through. So I'm just gonna ask of you today, and again, I've spoke with my colleagues, I say that again. Can we maybe support you bringing in this rock crushing deal and maybe in less than a year you have it cleared out? Give us a break. I appreciate your comments and I understand your question as to whether or not it can be done in a less period of time. That's not a question for me to answer. That would be a question to Mr. James. And I think uh, you should allow him the time to answer your question. But I would like to comment maybe briefly on a few things that you commented on. Um, he did sell crawfish off this property. I've been out there, I've seen the crawfish traps. We've talked about the, the crawfish. I've even talked to others who raise crawfish just out of my interest in what he was doing. Um, I, I didn't personally buy any crawfish while he was cooking it, but I know of people who have. And just because someone may not have seen any crawfish sold there or steam coming from cooking crawfish, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. There's a lot of things we don't see because we're maybe not there when it happens. But um, it, as far as the comment about wanting to remove the rock, it's an eyesore. He's trying to work with, Mr. James is trying to work with the commission to get that done. That's why he's here today to ask for a new renewal of a temporary permit to allow him sufficient time to work with the people who will crush the rock and get it off of the site. He's behind you in wanting the, in the residents and wanting to see it removed. That's his goal too. So he's asking for your help and consideration. I don't think three years is an un, unreasonable time because of what's he's, the unknowns that you're potentially faced with in something like this. Uh, I've been involved in large operations where you ran heavy equipment and weather is a very limiting factor. If we're blessed with a drought, and I hope we're really not because we don't need drought conditions, but dry weather helps. But if we have a wet spring, summer, that slows the operation down. And that's nothing he can control or you as commissioners control. That's up to the good Lord. If it rains, it rains. If it's dry, it's dry. And we all have to live with those conditions and make the best we can. Um, I appreciate it not wanting to come back. If, if he should have delays and have to go through the process again, because again, his effort is to get it done as quickly as he possibly can. Now, if y'all allow Mr. James to answer your question. I don't have any more questions. I just had a plea. I believe it's time for us to deliberate. Yeah. It, I don't believe there's any more discussion we can have at this point, and uh, the board needs to discuss this matter and take a vote. So do I hear a motion on the floor just to start us off? Ms. McCullough? Do you hear a motion to do what? Approve? Yeah. Oh, no. Approve, deny, or modify? Deny. I, I, I make a motion to deny. Ms. McCullough makes a motion to deny the application. Is there a second? I second. Ms. Uh, Dr. Tebow seconds that motion. Let's discuss this matter. Can we, um, Mr. Clark, can we do a, a stipulation here that we can shorten the time? Yeah. I think, no, I think. Not three years, but can we shorten the time? Maybe eight, I think we, 12 we, months? I think we, we landed on 18 months as a compromise. Uh, but we wanted to ensure that there was ample time because we had done that in other rock crushing operations around the city, uh, but I think 18 months was uh, a reasonable time in order to uh, complete the project that uh, Mr. James has. I do think that the residents want the rock out of there, and I do think that James, Mr. J Mr. James is trying to get get it done, and I do think that it will be a win-win a for both sides to commit to a time, a time frame 
I think the appropriate motion then, Mr. Balderas, would be a substitute motion, motion. to approve yeah. for 18 months rather than three years. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Is there a second for that? Second. Mr. Elberson, second. He got okay. up there first. So uh, the, the substitute is to uh, approve the, uh, the project for 18 months, and Elberson seconded that. Uh, so the substitute motion needs to be heard first. Is there any discussion on that? This is an 18-month approval rather than a denial? Did you no. Draw? no, we'll vote on the substitute first. Okay. So uh, I believe it's time to, to vote. Yes, sir. So the motion on the floor is the substitute motion, which is to approve this project for 18 months. Uh, please vote your machines. And that's unanimously in favor. So I believe, uh, uh, Mr. James, you got your marching orders. Uh, the matter's closed now, Mr. Okay. James. I'm sorry. You can discuss this with Mr. Clark or... I just want to thank the board. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to go on to the next case now. So, Mr. Roberts, you have 18 months to clear out, right? Mr. James has an 18-month permit to run this rock crusher. Okay. So you got half a loaf. Okay. The next case is number eight. It's 23-43-C. Uh, it is a zoning request by Blunt Property Group uh, uh, to rezone uh, from R17 to RMHP, uh, which I believe stands for Mobile, excuse me, Manufactured Home Park. And the property is on Pines Road, west of Pines Road, approximately 375 feet north of Flournoy Lucas. Um, uh, we have been advised that uh, the Blunt uh, Property Group wishes to withdraw this application. Isn't that correct, Mr. Clark? That is correct. We have a letter from Mr. Colby Blunt requesting a withdrawal. Okay. We and, just ask uh, that you uh, motion and accept the withdrawal. So we, we need a motion, uh, and, which is approved, to withdraw this application from the agenda. Is so there any? Oh, oh, so Mr. Andrews puts it on the table. Second. There's a second by Ms. McCullough. Is there anyone in the room to speak on this matter? And the answer is no. So uh, any further discussion on uh, withdrawing this application? Please vote your machines. Oops. I voted wrong. Oops. We can fix that. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. Fat fingers. Okay. The uh, vote is unanimous. We're going to move on to item number nine. Uh, this is uh, case number 23-48-C, special use permit and site plan submitted by the Taylor Family Property, LLC. The location is 527 Stoner, uh, approximately 300 feet west of Highland. And the zoning right now is C2. The request is a, a permit, a special use permit to do a food truck park. Uh, is uh, Mr. Taylor in the room? How y'all doing? Yes, sir. How are you? Hello everyone. How are you doing? I'm Jeremy Taylor, uh, P.O. Box 8453, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71148. Um, so I'm going to present what I'm actually trying to do. Um, I know there are some questions and maybe a couple concerns. So in Highland, um, I'm a real estate investor, uh, my wife and I. We're real, we're real estate investors since 2016. And Highland is a, a, a unique place. I'm not from here. 
Um, it's one of the mixed multicultural areas in the in the city. Um, you have some very unique people over there, I'll say that. <laughs> there are also some other unique things about that area with it being historical. Um, having that value, having that, that, that vibe, that feel. It's a lot of kind of commercial, street by street residential places over there. Highland has what you call a food desert. Um, food desert is a place where there are not many locations where you can actually go and pick something up to eat, grab something to eat. <laughs> and on Stoner, Stoner is a, I feel like it's a main corridor situation. You have the ambulance that's, you know, running to and from. I mean, you have a lot of police that take that Stoner Avenue to go to routes or go to calls and different things of that nature. You have a couple hospitals in the area. Uh, you have Brentwood back there. Um, and, you know, all these people, they need somewhere where they could probably go and sit and eat, sit and dine. But not just those people, the citizens uh, in that area need somewhere where they can go sit, mm -hmm. Ms. Rachel. <laughs> so, again, with Highland being a unique area, I think that what I'm trying to do with a food truck park uh, would, would benefit that area. And it gives, um, it gives people somewhere they can go and they can sit and they can relax. Uh, this is not your typical uh, food truck park where you just have a couple food trailers. They just pull up and they just serve and go with generators and different things of that nature. Uh, it would be a food truck park where you can actually come in and sit under pavilion, um, up underneath gazebos, up underneath umbrellas. We may have a couple of hammocks, you know, if you're just coming out there to just listen to some music because we want to play soft music, where you can just want to sit and eat and vibe. Uh, we want to give people in the city a place where they can go, they can enjoy themselves, and they can eat and have a good time. A food truck park is unique in its own self because it gives you a variety. So you're not dealing with just burgers and wings on one day, or you're not just dealing with tacos or soul food or something of that nature. You can actually have a variety of uh, foods that you may want to choose from, that you may just want to taste and come out and eat. Um, Highland, in that area on Stone Avenue, that's a historical area. I had a chance to meet with Miss Rachel Jackson in the Stony Hill community. That's a different group of people. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and um, Mr. Preacher, he was, he's, we've definitely been in contact with each other and we've spoken. Mm -hmm. And those citizens would love to be able to come down Stoner versus having to drive all the way down Uri uh, to actually get something to eat. I haven't spoken to the uh, employees of Brentwood, the employees of Willis Knight, and the employees of, of the other hospitals and banks in the areas. But I'm sure, uh, because I didn't want to speak too prematurely, but I'm sure if they were fortunate to be able to have something of this nature, they would love this to be in that area. Um, tech nowadays allow you to have things we call QR codes. QR codes allow you to scan them and it pulls up information. Um, and these are one of the things that I plan to have a part of this food truck park to basically kind of describe to or tell you days before who would be here on this day or this week. And so if you want to scan this QR code and you want to come for lunch or you want to come for dinner because we will have two different shifts. We would have an 11 to three, we would shut down to allow the next set of trailers to come in. Um, and then we will have a dinner from five to nine that we will close sharply at nine. It will allow you to scan this code to see who will be here uh, ahead of time. So you'll know what day, um, if you did choose to come and be a part of it or come get something to eat, you'll know who will be there. Uh, so it's not a fly by night situation it's not that they pay the day they come and park today. Uh, you definitely have to register, you know, days before, maybe weeks before, 
um, I've spoken to vendors, and vendors are up for things of this nature. Um, I know I talked to a couple of vendors and they spoke about the downtown situation and they will love something like this because of the consistency, um, because of people being able to dine in. And when you mention, you know, soft music is different from loud, you know, rock or, you know, hip hop rap. Um, I'm not saying you won't hear an, a hip hop song but you won't hear any, you know, crazy gangster rap. As you can see, I have, a, have four kids. So no cursing, no hooping and hollering will be, you know, tolerated. Uh, before I spoke of an alcohol use permit, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to do any alcohol simply because uh, my building, my beverage facility, is not a permitted building to sell actual alcohol. Uh, we will have police presence on site. Uh, we will have a uniformed police officer that would be there seven days a week uh, from five to nine. They will work the evening shift. Um, as far as the lunch shift go, you're not going to pretty, you know, you're not going to see too much, you know, um, I guess foolishness. So in the evening time, we will have it patrolled, and you will be uh, protected. You will be in a safe environment. Um, I don't want to talk too, too much because I know you guys have some concerns and, you know, whatever, whatever concerns you have today, I'm willing to address them if we have to, well, if, if this is, if it's a need to actually push it off, we'll address them, we'll get the concerns taken care of and they'll be addressed uh, for the next uh, hearing if, if need be. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? Say that it sounds like a great idea. And yeah. You said you had in contact with Brentwood, and what was the other? Willis Knight. Uh, Willis Brentwood, Knight. Willis Knight, and you have the um, oh. surgeon yeah. hospitals up the way. And but I'm sure they would yeah. they would love to utilize that space. Yes, ma'am. For you know patients, clients, or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Um, sounds like a great idea. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Jackson. Um, Mr. Taylor, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. And as I told you before during our meeting, you, you have excellent ideas, and I really applaud you for all you're trying to do because that is something that is needed in that area. Yes, ma'am. One of the concerns we had upstairs uh, was um, the stage area as far as being close to the houses. How do you, uh, what, are your, what are your? The actual stage area, I, I told my draftsman to get rid of. Um, we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Uh, so that that would be something that would actually be deleted from the plans. Okay. Um, early on, I wanted to have something of a live band or someone come out and perform, but um, I'm not. That that was prematurely. I shouldn't have done that, and I made that mistake. So the actual stage will be actually deleted from the plans. Well, that's okay. We all make mistakes. That's human error. Yes, But what we do is what we do to fix it Yes, ma'am. helps out. And yes, then with the soft music, it's a plus. Yes, so ma'am. So good, good job. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. So will the stage be added later on? If it's added later on, um, I've been in communication with the owner of the property that's next door. Um, I want to buy the property next door, and if I'm able to buy the property next door, then I will add a stage because okay. I, everything will be respectful at that point. Okay. 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 Yeah. I just want to commend you on, on, on the draft and what you're trying to do in the community because mm -hmm. it's well needed. You, you, you spoke on one thing I like, the food desert thing. Right. There is a food desert thing. Yes, it is. Yeah, there is a food desert. And this is going to solve that issue in some way. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Taylor, what Stoner Avenue also is, is a major east-west corridor for the city. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in some places in pretty poor condition. I'm looking at a, a photograph. Uh, I'm looking at an empty lot with two uh, houses, uh, houses on each side of it. That's your, four, uh, your 527 Stoner, that's correct? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, it looks like these houses are unoccupied. Is that correct? 539 and 541 is mine as well. Um, we want to do some renovations to 539, but 
uh, we definitely want to talk to the historical planning committee uh, because if the work is too extensive, then it may be better off just, you know, doing something of a new build. Um, if you're going to have to go in and put a quarter million dollars into a home, you may be better off coming out with a newer model of uh, construction or newer, mo newer development. Um, we, and this is why I say this is a unique area, they have a different set of people. Just last night, I had to deal with a guy who um, was trying to break into my 539 I'm using as my real estate office, so it's not actually vacant. But it's because it's my real estate office, I get traffic. And 11 o'clock last night, um, I had to meet the police over there because the guy was, you know, trying to go inside. Well, he actually went in one of the doors. He went in the wrong door, luckily. Um, he didn't actually go in the right door. And so now what happens is um, we have a um, we have been approved to put the fencing up. And so 539, 541, 527, and 523, all of those structures will be fenced in with a, a three-foot privacy fence up front with eight-feet privacy fences of going around the back and on the sides to where we don't have to deal with someone um, trying to actually come over or walk through or different things of that nature. So it's not vacant, uh, but it's, it's, it's not in the best um, shape, I, I would say that. Did you have uh, neighborhood participation? <clears throat> yes, uh, we actually, the neighborhood participation, I mean, it, it went real well. Um, I had maybe six or seven people to come out, more than the usual in that area. Um, they had a notepad of questions, and you know, one of the things that um, that they were concerned about was, will it be alcohol served? Which we had to go back and address that of no alcohol will be served. And another concern that they actually had was the noise of the generators, and we addressed that concern because we're going to actually put in uh, plugs um, for each trailer to actually be able to connect in. So each trailer will actually have its own um, plug-in for each trailer to where you don't have to have, um, I, I, you don't have to have an operating generator. So that kills all of that noise. Now as far as the music, um, when I say soft music, it's literally gonna be soft music. Um, as, if, as if you were sitting on your deck outside and you were just letting speakers, you had some speakers and you're just letting soft music play as you eat as you sit and talk, and as you have one of your um, snow cones, because we will have a snow cone stand um, on the property as well. So if you, in this hot summer, you can actually come through there and come get your snow cone. Any okay, questions you from Mr. Can. Taylor? <coughs> Mr. McCullough? Did you come before us not long ago mm -hmm. for a rezoning? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have any idea what you wanted to do, and so now you've come up with these great ideas? Well, no, for those lots, that was for the other end of Stoner. Um, like you okay. said, you got some rough patches. I like Highland. I'm a real estate, I'm, I'm heavily invested in Highland. And I want to change the culture um, of that area. Um, they give me the history. But I want to bring back the old culture, old history, the old vibes, the fun vibes. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm, I'm on that end, it's, it's, you get definitely got something coming that way as well. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. I thought I remembered. Any more questions for Mr. Taylor? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in favor? Anyone opposed? Any opposition to this proposal? Okay. I believe it's time for, excuse me. Mr. Clark, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. If you recall from the pre-briefing meeting, we as staff had asked you to defer and, and to continue this application in order to allow time to get the site plan to a, a point where it fits and it, it's uh, appropriate. Uh, just like you said, there are a lot of wonderful ideas. The staff is very supportive of uh, what's happening with Mr. Taylor and in Highland, but we just needed a month to work with him to get the site plan so that we could actually approve it. 
You're shaking your head yes, Mr. Taylor? Oh, yes. I, I, <laughs> I was shaking my head yes because I, I spoke to him, and that's why I said I was aware of it. I thought you guys may have had some other concerns, but I did speak to him, so I'm aware of that. You know, he has a bit of a problem with the pushback. Do I hear a motion to defer? Second. I'm first. <laughs> Mr. Clark. I believe uh, Ms. McCullough was first. Mr. Robertson, uh, I'll I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Clark a few questions before we move on. Uh, but well, before you do that, Mr. Balderas, I want to put the motion on the floor. So the motion is by Ms. McCullough, and the second is by Mr. Moss. So we're going to we're going to defer this one right? to, to defer this matter. So you have the floor now. Okay. I wanted to ask: uh, Do you have do we have a food truck park here in the city? Is there a designated place? Elsewhere, elsewhere now, besides. I'm going to yield to Adam Bailey because they deal with uh, food trucks. I don't know if there are food truck parks in the city. There is no food truck park in the city. And so I feel like this is something that is going to set a precedent for us. So we need to, you know, I do agree with the friendies. I do think that we need to look into food truck parks in, in the city and, and, you know, figure out a way possible to address it the best way especially close to our neighborhood. Yeah. I do think that Stoner needs, needs this, but we need to make sure we do it right. Yeah. Because we're setting a precedent here if we, if we approve his application. Uh, Mr. Bailey, so your response was we have no zoning for food truck parking at this time? No, the, the zoning for food truck park went in um, <coughs> in the original uh, Unified Development Code in 2017. We amended it in 2018 to better address the actual uh, business model of food trucks and how they at least the, how the NPC thought that they should operate. Since that time no one has come in and actually applied for and submitted plans for a food truck part. This is the first. Um, Mr. Uh, Taylor is not applying for uh, a food truck well he is applying for a food truck park correct yes yeah. so how does his application meet up with the standards that have already been written uh, well there it, it has met some of those but I think that uh, site plan is still incomplete in order to be able to fully address it with the use standards found in the unified development code for food truck parks and I think that's why the deferral that uh, uh, Mr. Clark is asking for is warranted. And if you want more more detailed information, uh, Mr. Robertson, I, I, I've asked, I've included uh, Ms. Trent in the uh, horseshoe so that she can give you that additional information why we are requesting a deferral. If Mr. Balderas, does that answer your question? It does. I just want to make sure that we're all aware that if we approve this, you know, maybe next month or the month after, we need to make sure that this this will set a precedent for the, for this special permit food truck park. I understand. I agree. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion to defer? My uh, my only <coughs> comment would be that uh, the revised site plan would delete the performance stage. I'm not asking you to respond to that. I'm just telling staff that's what I want on the table for the uh, discussion to revise your site plan. Okay, I think we're ready for a vote. Is there, uh, uh, well, let's just vote these machines, okay? To a motion to defer, defer. is a, a yes to support that. So when you say revise, you mean to meet the standards that uh, According to the Unified Development Code. That's correct. That's uh, Mr. Okay. Bailey's statement. Yes, okay. and Mr. Clark's as well. Okay. So the uh, the motion is adopted unanimously, and that means we're going to move on. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number ten is uh, 23-51-C. It is a special <coughs> use permit and site plan submitted by Louisiana Truck World uh, on behalf of owner Omar Investments. 8955 Mansfield Road, uh, 350 feet northeast of Old Mansfield Road. The existing zoning is C3. The request is a special use permit and site plan review. 
for purposes of a vehicle dealership with outdoor storage and display. And your name, sir? Mark Nava, 8955 Mansfield Road, 71118. I'm sorry, somebody was uh, coughing. <laughs> your name again, please? Mark, M A R K, Nava, N A V A. Mr. Nava, what yes, is sir. your address, please? 8955 Mansfield Road. Uh, you have the floor, Mr. Nava. Uh, we the, the the current zone is a C3. It's been operating as a um, payday loan establishment for the past 18 years, I believe. Uh, Lynn Nation, which they left uh, the state of Louisiana. Uh, I'm not I'm not for certain why, but anywho, uh, we're looking to uh, to put a car lot on this property. I'm sorry. The application says. Uh Truck world. Well, that's just the name of the the, the automobile dealership. I see. Okay. Yes, sir. Just going to kind of <laughs> lean into the uh, truck truck market. Yes, so. a lot of bubbles out there. Louisiana is a good good uh, truck truck market. Okay, so tell us about your project. Well, I, I've I've been in the car industry 23 years, and I, it's just time to slow down. Uh, just need to have something for myself. Worked for uh, pretty big organizations for a long time, and it's just time to do it on my own and, and slow down. Spend Very some good. more time at the house. And what's the size of the property? Uh, it's it's almost one acre, the the full property. And have you met with your neighbors? Yes, sir. <coughs> what do they say? Uh, two neighbors showed up. They were fine. The only uh, concern was in the rear of the building. There's there's uh, a lot of trees and brush and stuff back there. They were concerned that we were going to tear down the trees and put more concrete, which I have no, I mean, you can see those trees been there for 100 plus years. I mean, I mean it cost half a million dollars to take take all those trees out and put concrete. And it's, it's, I'm leasing the building, so I have, I have plenty of parking. I have no concern with those trees they could, I mean they could stay there I'm not interested in taking any tree out of out of the property any questions from mr. Nava all right sir did you bring any anybody with you in support uh, my wife but the other owner <laughs> that would be the lady in the front row yes huh? sir okay okay well uh, anyone else who wants to speak in favor, now's your time. Anybody in opposition to this application? Okay, I think it's time for the board to make a decision, Mr. Nava. Uh, no questions for Mr. Nava, correct? Okay. Do I hear a motion? Second. Second. Ms. McCullough says yes. Mr. Moss seconds that. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Staff, nothing? Okay, let's vote your machines, please. I feel good for you, Mr. Nava. I think you got this one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Very Appreciate good. the time. Good luck. Okay. Case number 23-60-C, item number 11 on the agenda is uh, Somdahl Associates on behalf of Centenary College. 3100 Woodlawn yeah. Avenue, yeah. southwest corner of East Kings and Woodlawn. Existing zoning is C2. The request is C2 to IC, which I believe stands for Institutional Campus. Campus. Okay. Uh, and for the purpose of conducting <coughs> or proposing athletic facilities. Mr. Elberson, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, due to my involvement in this uh, project, I'm going to recuse myself for this. Mr. Elberson recuses on behalf of Somdahl. Yes, sir. Your name? <laughs> My name is Chris Merkel. And, and Mr. I, Merkel, your address? 521 Linden Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, you represent the yes. development? I, re I represent Somdahl Associates. Okay. M-E-R-K-L-E? M-E-R-C-K-L-E. C-K-L-E. All right. You have the floor, sir. Okay. Oh. Um, we are applying for a zoning change for 3100 Woodlawn Avenue, which is the former uh, dental arts building. It's on the right corner. next to George's Grill. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Centenary purchased this building and, and is now uh, renovating it to be an athletic field locker room. And um, this is the, the last piece of the puzzle is to rezone this property and, and put it, as you can tell, the rest of their campus is IC. So this is just some, a puzzle piece. What's it going to look like? The, <laughs> the, uh, the locker room facility? Yeah. I do not have a, a rendering of it right now. Is it going to have a sign or any landscaping or anything like it's, that? It will. OK. OK. Any questions from Mr. Merkel? You asked the main one. I want to know what it was going to look like. <laughs> well, I can see what it looks like here. It's yeah, pretty plain uh, building. It says dental arts. Um, so I'm sure you're going to put some nice architectural touches on it. Correct. <clears throat> dress it up. Correct. Okay. Kings Highway is an important corridor for the city. So it is. A lot of people are going to be seeing that property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where the football team is going to dress out. It is, and I have uh, some of them here today. We would like to speak to Well, uh, uh, if anybody has any questions for Mr. Merkel, now's the time. I think he's completed his presentation. <laughs> well, and uh, just really quick, we did have a neighborhood meeting, and one person showed up in favor. Very good. Okay, anyone else here to speak in favor of this application by Centenary College? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look like a coach thank you appreciate the compliment <laughs> uh, my name is David Orr um, I'm the director of athletics at Centenary College uh, 2911 Centenary Boulevard in Shreveport uh, thank you for allowing us to speak today um, even though we don't have our renderings here it is quite a beautiful and remarkable looking rendering for this dental arts building um, Centenary having college football is a pretty exciting endeavor um, and to have an additional 100 plus student athletes on campus, we don't have a place to put them without this building. Um, we could try, but uh, we don't have a facility that, that could house that many. Uh, but we do think that it would be a very positive thing, especially when you're driving on Kings Highway. Uh, when you come through, if you've had that opportunity and pleasure to drive by, you'll see that there's a nice big sign out in front of the Dental Arts Building that says, now we go centenary football. We've got a lot of positive traction. I think it's not a week goes by that someone doesn't call and ask for season tickets. So it's been fantastic. Uh, one of the charges that we have at Centenary is to be Shreveport's college. And we take that very seriously. We want to be part of our community. Uh, and we'd love to have that space to allow us to have a successful football program. It's not just going to house football. It's also going to house women's soccer and women's softball. So this is, a, this is for both sides of uh, the male and female sports teams. Uh, we believe it will enhance our uh, presence not only on campus but in our community. And uh, we just thank you for your support. But the most important person I want to, I'm going to end up uh, coming up here, I know you're going to ask for any other support, is probably one of the best hires we've made. And I've been a centenary for 30 years. This is way better hire than me. And that's our head football coach. <laughs> So wonderful gentlemen, uh, but thank you for your support, uh, potential support on this project. Before you step away, yes, Mr. Sir. Orr, um, the comment was made uh, at our earlier uh, session upstairs that uh, Centenary has not always been welcomed with open arms by the neighborhood. Uh, so there is some sensitivity there among Absolutely. the people living in Highland and South Highland uh, to the the growth of the campus into areas that are not typically campus. Sure. So uh, please address that for me. In what capacity would you like me to address it? I've been in the area for a long time. I, we, we work, I will tell you from a coaching staff and student athlete perspective in that area on the south side of Kings, Hi Kings Highway, uh, we open up our campus to our community. Our coaches and student athletes want to help get involved. We host a ton of camps, clinics, and other things. We get involved with all demographics of our city. Uh, we believe in being part of this city. 
and we are always going to be welcoming. Centenary to me, I know it gets classified as kind of this unique bubble right there in the Highland, Broadmoor, South Highlands kind of area, but I don't, we don't want to be a bubble. We don't want to be a secret. We want to be open to all. That's who we want to be. If you walk around Centenary, notice there are no fences or gates with the exception of like to go in somewhere you might get hurt, but our campus is open and we want to remain that way. So however we can help and we will always be listening, always be listening because we want to be part of that. We don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. If you could get George's grill reopened, I think you'll be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> they just need a little bit more parking, I think, around the area. But, but yeah, it was one of the saddest things to watch that catch on fire a couple weeks ago. Yes. Uh, because it's been a long time staple of our area. It certainly is true. Well, uh, uh, any questions for Mr. Orr, no. Director of Athletics? No, I think it's a wonderful idea. And then, actually, you, you're are, you are inviting to the neighborhood. We have a lot of graduates that go and take pictures on your facility, so you keep the ground. I just saw there. a bunch of them this past yes, week. <laughs> They looked amazing. Yes, they look amazing. You have beautiful grounds. Thank you all very much. Ms. Jackson wants tickets to the first game. <laughs> yeah, I might need to recuse myself from this vote because I'm a gent also. I have a little gent blood in me. Oh, you're a graduate of Centenary? No, but I, I took classes at Centenary. I okay. think I should recuse myself. No, I don't think but so. I think no, good. No, that no, means we're no, Centenary no. siblings because I'm a Centenary <laughs> alum. I, I think you're good. That's awesome. I think you're good. good. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Orr. Uh, we have a coach in the room. <coughs> Byron Dawson, 5916 Manitoba Lane, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107. I want to first say what an honor and privilege it is to address this group of great leaders. Uh, I had a dream to come back to my city. Uh, I grew up here in Shreveport, Bossier. My uh, dad was a pastor here, Reverend Wilbur Dawson. He had a long time business as a florist and preacher in this area. I now have taken over his church and I pastor and lead Shadows of the Cross Ministry on Greenwood Road. Uh, it's been my dream to do something positive in Shreveport, Bossier. As a, as a citizen of this area, playing at Louisiana State University, uh, giving back has been big. My brother was in the National Football League. He played for the Colts, the Titans, and the Saints. We had a summer food giveaway every year that he was in the National Football League. Mayor Glover said at that time it was the biggest uh, giveaway by a single citizen in Shreveport history. And so we have a heart for the community. Our football team will do uh, nursing home visits. We'll lead chapel services. We'll go out, we'll work with the Holy Angels. We have football camps where we bring in former NFL players. Uh, I had two of my former players just this past weekend, Jarek Bernard and Michael Baskerville, who was drafted to the NFL. Those guys will host camps right there on our campus. And so we have a heart to give back. Nothing unites people like football. You know, Sunday is for football. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday is a national holiday. And if you want to bring people together, you use this great game. It, it, you know, this game cuts through all demographics, races, statuses, and it unites people because it's all about the team. And Shreveport Bolger needs a team. And we're that team. On the front of our jerseys, we'll have Shreveport on those jerseys. Uh, my goal in my first year was to make sure that we get a kid from every school in Shreveport, Bossier, and we're very close to that goal. There's only two schools right now in this city that we don't have a kid signed and ready to play this fall for us. So this is our team. And so uh, if small towns like Ruston and Gramlin and Natchitoches can have college football, when you combine Shreveport, Bossier together, it's one of the largest cities. It is the largest city in the state when you combine those two cities together. And so we want to be that, we want to be that team. We want to put something out there that we can all be proud of, but we need a place to dress. We need a locker room. <laughs> and so this dental arts building is sitting right there on our campus. And I wish we had the renderings because it is an amazing looking building. And it'll be a place that'll be a beacon of light on that corner. And uh, good things are happening here in Shreveport. Uh, many years I would always travel to Texas and my wife would make me stop at Bucky's, and there was nothing there 2017 and 
the last few times I've went over there, there's a whole metropolis that have grown up around that area. And if you look at the history of building football facilities in, in areas, that really grows the area. So I think football can be something positive. This year, while we're working on our stadium, we'll play all our games at Independence Stadium. And so uh, we want to be Shreveport's team. And if you check Time. the history. Time to wrap up. Coach. Okay, all right. Uh, if, if you check the history, mm -hmm. Shreveport has had great college football here. And we're just going to bring you back, bring that back. Thank you for your time. God Any bless. questions so. for Coach Dawson? Amen. Win. <laughs> Win. Yes, sir. That's our goal. Uh, Mr. Orr, what is the current enrollment at Centenary? The enrollment for this academic year is, in the, is just below 550. But we have an incoming deposited class, which is going to be our largest mm -hmm. since the D1 era. So we will be over 600 students this upcoming fall. Okay, very good. A lot Any of that's attributed for to football. Gentlemen? Any questions for these gentlemen? Mr. Orr, Mr. Merkel, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dawson? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a uh, rendering uh, right there on the screen. Is there anyone here uh, who is also in favor of this project? Anyone here in opposition? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. So moved to approve. Second. Uh, Ms. McCullough says yes. Ms. Jackson also says yes as a second. Is there any further discussion? We're going to uh, uh, rezone this property to IC for athletic facilities. Please vote. Nice job, Mr. Merkel. Chris is going to give you a raise. Next item is uh, amendments to the code submitted by Mr. Bailey uh, uh, on behalf of the MPC. Uh, Mr. Bailey, you have the floor. Adam Bailey, MPC staff, uh, 505 Travis Suite 440 Shreveport 71101. As I discussed in the pre-meeting uh, earlier this afternoon, there are two code text amendments in front of you. Uh, the first is changing the use matrix to allow for amusement facility indoor uh, to be permitted, a permitted use by right within the OR zoning district. That stands for office research. Second amendment uh, would be to change uh, the language uh, in uh, Article 18 nonconformities uh, that would allow for nonconforming lots. Uh, in any zoning district uh, that wanted to uh, have a manufactured home would be allowed. They would still have to uh, uh, get a special exception use approved by the ZBA. However, they wouldn't need a variance uh, in order to get that special exception use. Uh, NPC staff uh, recommends uh, that you all recommend approval for these code text amendments. They go to the council for final action, correct? Correct. And they'll be okay. presented to the council not next week, but the week after for first reading, and then I'll carry over into uh, beginning of June for final approval. Any questions for Mr. Bailey? Okay. Any comments from the audience? Pro or con? I'll entertain a motion. Someone to second. I think Mr. Andrews got this one. Mr. Andrews motions approval. Ms. McCullough says second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Okay. Those amendments are approved. Uh, old business. Um, Mr. Clark, is this the time to talk about committees? Yes, sir. If you have recommendation for committees, uh, but we, we asked you specifically uh, two recommendations for the Master Planning Committee. And I'll share with you why I want you to establish this committee. Um, I think it might be best if you say what the workload is going to be. <coughs> it's not going to be a major workload. Uh, as you all know, we are going through the process of updating the 2030, Great Expectation 2030 Master Plan. Uh, and we have the process in which to select the consultant in order to perform that process is to have the master plan subcommittee 
and the executive director and deputy director to select the uh, actual uh, consultant. Once we get that, we're trying to have a meeting uh, at uh, July, June 8th to review the application and make a determination. And that, uh, that recommendation will come before this board, and this board would have to uh, agree to accept this recommendation, or we would have to start the RFP process all over and find another submission for the master plan update. So we're just asking you to appoint a master plan subcommittee in order for us to reach out to them and get the process started. As we discussed previously today, <coughs> the master plan was adopted in 20 2010. 10, yes, sir. And it needs to be updated. It's past time to do some form of update. And the city p purchasing office has published a request for <coughs> proposals. They went through the whole process, yes. For sir. a consulting firm which does land use. Yes, sir. And you received one application. You had one person to submit an application. Okay, so the work of the committee that you're requesting is to review that application? They will review that application with uh, the director and the deputy director. Okay, uh, do I have any volunteers? Mr. Elberson, Ms. McCullough, Mr. Moss, how many people do you need? I didn't, I mean, <laughs> everybody. I'm glad, every, I, I will share with the, the board that you will get a you will get a chance to approve this. Uh, we had thought maybe a good number would be three, but uh, well, the I'm first in no position to ask the board member not to, to volunteer. Well, the first three are Elberson, McCullough, and Moss. So Rachel, you were too slow. Oh, it's okay. I'm good. That's fine. I'm good. Okay, so I believe you have your committee. Yes, we will be reaching out to the committee to set up a meeting where we will have the applicant that submitted the uh, proposal to meet with them and get we'll ask be able to ask any questions we have and they'll give an overview of exactly what will be happening and then we will make a recommendation to this board will the master plan address transportation the master plan will address transportation and will it address signs the master plan can address signs uh, On-premise and off-premise. It can address any <laughs> sign, whether it be on-premise or off-premise. On-premise being business signs, off-premise being billboards. So that's the request of the chairman is for those issues to be discussed. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe you have your committee, Mr. Clark. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Mr. Everson. I need to get those names. Make sure Sherry Charlie has them. Elverson, McCullough, and Moss. Elverson, McCullough, and Moss. Okay. We will be reaching out to those three to set up a meeting to uh, go through this process. Okay. Uh, the next item is new business. I, I would just like I shared with you upstairs that uh, uh, we had had a request from Allendale Strong to come and address the. Uh, Metropolitan Planning Commission uh, board just to talk about the things that Mr. Uh, Robertson was sharing with you, the, the connection between land use planning and transportation planning. Uh, we have reserved this room for uh, May 31st from 1.30 to 3 o'clock. may not need that much time. Unfortunately, uh, we would have lunch prepared for you, but I think we've been advised that we can no longer do that. Uh, we'll, we'll ask them again since this is a training exercise, but uh, <laughs> these attorneys don't understand. But, uh, Work your magic, Mr. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so if we, we highly encourage you to come to that session to sit down and listen. We'll also be reaching out for that session uh, are at a later date with the uh, uh, Louisiana Department of Transportation and NL Car to give you an update on where the regional transportation planning entity is with selecting uh, a route for I-49. So we'll have all of that uh, uh, in the month of May or June. 
So the a meeting uh, to address the Allendale Strong questions concerning uh, land use and transportation will be May 31st here in this room. Uh, I, I sincerely request all members to attend. Um, um, it's been pointed out to me that uh, Shreveport uh, was harmed decades ago <coughs> by the construction of Interstate 20 right through the middle of our city. And the harm was continued by the construction of Interstate 49. And the group in Allendale is trying to defeat the connector, which is the, uh, the last leg of the harm. So the point that Allendale Strong is trying to make, and they've got professional expertise on this, is that land use planning, which is what we do, and transportation planning, which we don't do, should be combined. Because if you think about it, this board seven years ago passed a resolution in favor of that project, that billion dollar, three mile interstate going through Allendale without any staff analysis. They simply passed a resolution saying we want it built. There was no staff analysis. We have a professional staff here and they weren't asked to comment. So I think that's an error. Uh, and I think it's time for Shreveport to stop making these kinds of mistakes. Now, this presentation's not gonna be necessarily about the connector. It's about the broader issue of how you plan your city and you incorporate roads and highways into that plan. So uh, I strongly encourage y'all to attend uh, I think you'll be glad that you did. There was a meeting with DOT here, right? There was supposed to be a presentation by DOTD about the status of the connector, but uh, uh, we were not able to make that uh, scheduling with uh, Mr. Calavota uh, from DOTD. Uh, Mr. Clark, if, if NL Cog and DOTD can come on the 31st, I would request that you bring them. If you recall, I said that there might be representation from NL Card and DOTD at that meeting, but if they are not able to come, we will have them in a later date. That's to fine. Make a presentation. That's 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 fine. That's acceptable. Um, Thank you. Um, I'm not going to participate in the discussion necessarily. I might ask a few questions, but in my role as chairman of the commission, I, I'm going to work for the commission. Okay, so. Uh, I appreciate y'all hearing this subject matter, and I think it's important, and um, that's all I got to say. Is there anything else, Mr. Clark? You all like to hear it. Mr. Jordan had, a, had an emergency. That's why he couldn't attend this meeting, but he gave me the reports that I can share with you about the activity of uh, uh, the zoning enforcement uh, entity of our office. Uh, the month of April 3rd to May 3rd, there were 14 commercial certificates of occupancy, uh, 14 home-based businesses for our certificate of occupancy, and 30 violations. Uh, year to date, there have been 215 violations uh, and uh, 65 certificates of occupancy, and 86 home-based certificates of occupancy. 14 commercial certificates of occupancy for the month. For the month of April 3rd to May 3rd. And 14 home-based uh, uh, certificates. Yes, sir. And 30 violations. Yes, sir. And year-to-date, 65 certificates of op uh, yes. occupancy for commercial establishments, 86 home-based certificates, and 215, 215 violations. 215 violations, yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, any questions for board members? Any comments from board members? Uh, Mr. Andrews. Oh, oh. We haven't gotten to public comment yet. Okay. Uh, that's the next step, Mr. Chair. I was fixing to zoom right over that. 
Okay, I don't think any board members have anything left to say, and neither does staff, correct? Uh, anybody in the audience wish to address the MPC? Yes, sir. You have the floor. Name and address, please. My name is Ralph Blake. I live at 920 Ravendale Drive, Shreveport, zip code 71107. Uh, what I want to speak about uh, is something that perhaps there was no staff analysis of, and that is the Ravendale Apartments, which are going to be built, I understand, uh, directly across the street from my house. Uh, I've lived in this house for 20 years, looked at these beautiful woods right behind Brookshire's, and a few weeks I got a letter saying that um, the, uh, the MPC had approved uh, this uh, apartment complex for low-income housing that was going to be built there. Uh, and the people of the North, High North Highlands Association were really surprised when they got this information. One, Ravendale Drive, a road, is an extremely busy street, especially since the people who work on Grimmett Drive in the industrial area can um, access I-49 by going down Ravendale Drive across North Market, one of the busiest intersections and most dangerous in town, go down the hill and get on I-49. That is really uh, from it's being a very quiet street when I moved there 20 years ago, it's now extremely busy and very loud. No sidewalks along the street, so people who uh, are try walk down that street to the bus stop, they take their lives in their hands. That's true for the senior citizens like me who live on that street um, when they go to their mailboxes. There's so much traffic on that street. When a uh, 60 unit uh, complex is going to be built on that street across from my house, that's gonna increase the number of vehicles going up and down the street. And uh, we're, we're very concerned about that. Um, most residents on this street are senior citizens, um, and there's enough noise already. North Highlands is an area. Uh, we, I know that in our zip code, 71107, and we've had a lot of things from our zip code to, today, but from in our area, lots of high crime, but there is not in North Highlands. North Highlands is a very diverse community. Uh, we have not only senior citizens, but we have young families with children there. And uh, there's, in the North Highlands area, we have no crime to speak of. And where people are concerned that building this uh, new project across the street from me is going to increase um, crime in our area. Um, the developer who we met with when we first got this letter, he was quite surprised to see so many people turn up at that first meeting. And we expressed many of our concerns to him then. Even our councilwoman was there who told Mr. Metzger, I told you when you start came up with this idea, this was not a good idea, but it was passed anyway, I guess, uh, by, uh, I suppose, uh, this commission, uh, the planning commission. Nevertheless, um, I am concerned, like one of the issues that I, I've thought about a lot, being um, a retired school teacher, is that with the 60 units they're going to build, one building is supposedly is for single, uh, uh, like one bedroom apartments, and another building is for two bedroom apartments, Another building is three bedroom apartments, and then there doesn't seem to be any place for the kids to play. 
in that area. It's a small area behind Brookshire's. Thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Blake. Mr. Clark, I have a question. D that didn't come in front of us here. Mm -hmm. It did. That was allowed by right to happen. It was, uh, it was uh, Zone C1, I think, exactly. if I'm remembering correctly. And it was up above ground apartments. And at the bottom floor would be retail. And they didn't have to go through any special approval. Gotcha. Uh, and that's why we are perfectly aware of the uh, concerns of the citizens and we've explained this on many occasions and we have explained it to the councilwoman from the district. Uh, I had some concerns when it happened, but it's a use that's allowed by right and you cannot deny a developer when he has a use by right from developing his property. So in other words, the, the land is zoned uh, for this for this use, correct? It's properly zoned. Everything is in place. We, there was no need to come before you. So will it go in front of the city council? It did not go before the city council. It doesn't? It was, uh, so one more time. Okay. He had a right to do exactly what he's doing. He did not require any approval. And that's why maybe citizens were upset, but there was nothing that we could do to prevent that development from a carrier. So does he need a occupancy permit? Once they build it, he will get a certificate of occupancy, but that won't be a problem because it will be built to code. But he has to come to apply, right? He has to he come has start to the process. To the zoning office. He has to apply for for the whole process, right? He has to apply for a certificate of occupancy. Once he applies for a permit that may have already happened through the permit center. It's uh, still site plan approval. And site plan approval, yeah. Uh, Mr. Clark, I mean, I've been down Ravendale Road a number of times. It seems like it's dominated by large single-family residences. How did a multi-family spot sneak in there? It, can I? Can I? Go ahead, Mr. Ellis. I think he said a few times the property is zoned C3, and if you look at the zoning map that's online, where you can see how all the property is zoned you can determine what the zoning is. And then from there, you can look at what is allowed in that zone. And what Mr. Clark said is that apartments above ground are allowed in C3 with retail underneath it. That's, that's been allowed for years. So there was nothing that we did as a body right. to approve anything like that. It was approved by right and we can't stop anyone from doing it because we think it's not right. That we, we can't do that. So the commercial zoning uh, um, essentially stops at Brookshire's? Well, if, if you look at the map, it goes all the way back uh, a, couple of, a couple of lots back off of the street there. So yes. Okay. It actually goes back further. It goes further down past the midpoint on Ravendale. That's C3 zoning. So yeah. those so large residences are in commercial, commercially zoned areas. There is a wooded area directly behind Brookshire and that shopping center. That this is right here. That's going to be the site of the apartments? That's the site of the apartments. The biggest thing there okay. is you have frontage roads. So I, I, I don't disagree it, with the, the way it's characterized and the way you, you think that the property uh, looks and appears, but the fact is the zoning is what it is there. Yeah. And in order to change it, the owner has to make an application to change it. For instance, if you don't think that's appropriate, the owner would need to come in and change, apply to a change the zoning from C3 to R one or two whatever the residential zoning might be but that's how that's how it all works here so we didn't we did not approve anything uh in particular it's based on how the property is zoned currently and i would encourage anyone to look at a zoning map look at it because you you don't necessarily know what a property is zoned because of the way it appears may i ask you a question Step up, Mr. Blake. My house is directly across the street from the woods. Is my house, can, you know, can I put my house up for sale as commercial property? 
Well, like Mr. Elberson said, you should probably consult the zoning map to see what the zoning is. Your 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 house is, looks like it's current 920 Raven. 920. It notes currently zoned R112. So that means it's residential only. That means it's residential only. Okay. And when the man uh, met with our, our, when we all met together, he said, well, what shops would you like to have on the ground floor? We said, we don't need any shops. There are at least six empty shops in the Brookshire's complex. So, Thank you, sir. aware of it also if we share it with them, but uh, that has no bearing on what's happening up there. Any further discussion? Anybody else in the audience wish to address the board? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Ms. McCullough moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Mr. You Moss seconds. Bang the gallery. There you go. Meeting adjourned. There you go. <laughs>